just want to mention the Dewey Street Riots of 1964. It happened just about 200 metres from St Mary's School. Uh, I was 12 years old. Um, there was a British general election uh, in 1964 and the West Belfast constituency was held by a unionist MP, mainly because the nationalist vote was split or a, and there was a heavy element of abstentionism um, in the nationalist community. Um, there was uh, a Republican candidate and his headquarters was about 200 yards from the school and it was his headquarters was a disused shop front and there was an Irish flag in the window. Now a firebrand preacher called the Reverend Ian Paisley who uh, 40 years later would become chief minister sharing power uh, with, a, with Sinn Féin. He threatened to lead a march of shipyard workers to remove it if the police did not do so. This was in accord with the, um, the Flags and Emblems Act. Now, actually things change, but not a lot. On semi-public buildings, such as hotels in Belfast, you will never see an Irish flag. It is used extensively to mark territory, as indeed is the British flag. But for example, the first St Patrick's Day parade uh, to go through Belfast city centre uh, took place less than 20 years ago. I have a postcard uh, in the folder here. And Irish flags were banned from that parade. Well, as you can see from the postcard, it had absolutely no effect. Um, but to this day, marchers going through the city centre are expected to hear to kind of a definition of Irish that is ethnic rather than nationalist. That to be Irish is in fact a mere ethnic label rather than a fully fledged nationality. Now, in Boston, in New York, in Chicago, Los Angeles, Moscow, Beijing, Paris, London, you can actually expect to see an Irish flag in a St Patrick's Day parade, but it is actually quite ridiculous to think that you can have a St Patrick's Day parade without the national flag of Ireland. It would be almost like having um, the 4th of July without the stars and stripes. It, it makes no sense. Now, you may think, well, these are horrible British people, um, who, after all, two years ago, their Prince William married Kate, and he was wearing a British Army uniform, actually that of the Irish Guards, uh, which is a British regiment. But I put it to you, um, provocatively maybe, that Americans tend to do the same. Um, when I got online for the first time in 1998, uh, I chatted to a lot of people who told me I'm Irish, and even they who would consider themselves perhaps friends of Ireland and have a sense of Irishness, they are almost dismissing Irishness as a cute, maybe desirable ethnic label, but nevertheless don't tend to see it as I would as a nationality. But by way of contrast, my youngest grandson, he's five years old, uh, started school, Catholic school, in September. And just about his first day, he made a little paper Irish flag. Now, what I've learned from this really is that that passiveness that I spoke about of my father's generation, of my grandparents' generation, and even in my day to a certain extent, that's absolutely impossible now. Um, people allow themselves to be Irish. Uh, you know, last July, to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of the British Queen, state schools had British flags. And I'd like to put it to you that could a single education system possibly work without undermining a sense of Irishness or a sense of Britishness? Northern Ireland is not a homogenous society and yet people want to make it one. Should Irish children be compelled to have allegiance to Britain? Or indeed, should British children 
be compelled to have an allegiance to Ireland. But can I point out, again maybe a little provocatively here in Texas, that many of you have uh, a Pledge of Allegiance in your schools. Is that the same or is it different? 